Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning by for today's latest build. Orpheus Vig, when was the last time you used these exotics in game? They've been kind of up in the air at most parts of the game, as they are good but not overall needed in many content. They were really powerful back in year 1, and multiple players with it made spamming super a tad too broken, but overall fun. A few years later, and now they have resurfaced again with Void 3.0, and officially they are the go-to exotic if you want to have max DPS against bosses to many bosses alike. So I'm going to show you how to achieve just that with this effective hunter build that will allow you to maximise damage via your super, cause a constant debuff via mods and grenades, have the ability to go invisible however many times you like, and allow you to create wells by the mountain load. Orpheus Rig 3.0 is back in full swing. But before we head in, if you could do me a massive favour and leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on future content, I would really appreciate it. Starting with the subclass, we'll be using the newly updated Mobius Quiver for its quick burst damage and effectiveness against bosses. It is very important that you keep just this subclass as the super has now been updated to shoot two volleys of one super instead of one single one. Compared to before, it's now been condensed so that they can track better and do more effective damage over time. And this is where Orpheus Rigs will come into play, with its first shot allowing you to stack damage already there and is pretty extraordinary to see. So to expand on this area, you're going to want a setup that will allow you to debuff when you please and maximise the amount of damage you do. Aspects wise, we have the Vanishing Step ability so that every time we dodge we can go invisible. And then you want to have the Stylish Executioner, where defeating, weaken, volatile, suppressed, etc targets will make you go invisible, but will also grant you the ability to weaken targets via your melee with the buff being an active 15%. From here, you then want to have the Echo Remnants Fragment, which will increase your grenade duration. Echo of Undermining, where you avoid grenades weaken targets. Echo of Reprisal, where defeating combatants while surrounded will grant you super energy. And then Echo of Instability, where defeating combatants via grenades grant you volatile rounds for a few seconds. Now, currently, the subclass is heavily focused around gaining super energy and debuffing combatants as much as we can, as this will allow us to maximise damage for our weapons and super whenever we like. The idea here is to use your grenades as much as we can to get the grenade ability back and super energy back as well. And then from here, we can use our melee and grenades to apply multiple debuffs on multiple combatants at once, which will allow us to slow them down. We can then mop up and collect the wells and then release our build up super onto a champion or boss and call it a day. Rather simple, it doesn't require a lot of thinking to process this. What you want to do next though is to make sure you have the right mods to support you through and through. I have my discipline at 80 as this will be the main way to build up super energy back quickly, while having my intellect at 50 is low but will be supported by the likes of Frontal Wisdom mod, which grants a plus 50 to intellect over its duration. You'll then want to have the Elemental Ordnance for creating wells, Battle for Wealth for creating more than one well at a time, and Well of Tenacity for that extra bit of protection over time. Now with mods added, you should have the ability to get your super and grenades back within a few seconds than normal. That extra damage via your super goes a long way when you apply it multiple times, and your abilities with a debuffing feature means you can lay the pressure down some more if you don't have your super ready. It's a win-win situation overall. Although vastly different to its counterpart back in Gear 1 of Destiny, it still holds a lot of weight as it did back then, but on a more global scale. So from here, your weapon should focus on damage and maximising everything you got, as you want to keep the abilities flowing and damage high. My primary example is the Ragnar D with Substance and Demolitionist, which makes a great pairing for allowing users to consistently build grenade energy back per kill made. You don't need to worry about reloading if against minor or major combatants, as each kill will auto-reload your weapon, and from here you can keep using your weapon and throwing grenades as many times as you like. The only downside of the weapon is that it fires slow, which of course makes sense for its frame type, but except from that, I highly recommend you look out for such a role. For a secondary, we have the Paladrome Adept with Overflow and Rampage, and once again, another fantastic weapon with cool perks to boot. Overflow will boost my magazine size to 20, while Rampage will keep up my damage up to a max of 3. With the two combined, you're going to have a non-stop buff hand cannon that's going to make taking on mages and ultras a little bit more easier. I've applied the Element of Armors mod as well, so I can create more wells additionally with it, and I found that it works out really well considering I only have a few shots to prop them. Of course, if you don't have this fantastic hand cannon, then don't frown, as the new Funnel Web SMG has been making the rounds for everyone, and truthfully is a bit better if you don't care so much about that extra damage or range applied. 
Now, heavy, we have the Gallowhorn, which will be the filler buster for maximum damage once our super and debuffs are applied. With everything together, we can easily reach 200k in damage or even more with teammates who could be using Hothead with Explosive Light. If you don't have Galahorn, then don't worry, as any other rockets can do. And though you might be losing a little less damage, with the ability to go ahead and create your own perfect role in Witch Queen, you have endless ways of doing things how you like. But still, I highly recommend you try and get Galahorn if you can. For stats, as mentioned, we want to have both discipline and intellect at its highest point you can reach. Now we can be smart with how we do these two areas depending on if you have the armor stat to support them or not. Ideally having discipline as your highest stat is your first priority as you will be using our grenades to create walls and build up super very fast. Ashes and ashes are a must if you want to build super via grenades alone and then having the additional mods such as innovation, absolution and distribution will overall help with building on your stats further. Of course elemental ordnance and from the wisdom will be playing a part as well but this will be coming in naturally. This then ties back into your intellect which is at 50 and like I said earlier, this will be supported by your grenades and the Thunder Wisdom mod. Although the effects of the mod isn't straight away, it's simply acting the same way as if you had a 100 cooldown and it's overall better than nothing. You can of course swap in and use Weapon Hash Fresh instead if you want to actively get faster or if you have the stats, get the stat alone to 100 instead. Only things left over are the Thermo Shot Plating mod which is a great mod to have as it reduces incoming solar and arc damage and Overload Grenade which simply stun Overload Champions. That should summarize everything about the stat section you need, so here are the mods compiled into one for you. For Head we have Discipline, Ashes to Assets and Frontal Wisdom mod. Arm we have Discipline, Fastball and Elemental Orders mod. Chest we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener, Thermal Shot Plating and Elemental Armaments mod. Leg we have Discipline, Absolution, Innovation and Bountiful Well mod. Cloak with Mind Recovery, Distribution, Overload Grenades, and Well of Tenacity mod. Max damage via supers for a hunter has been quite a weird thing as of lately, as back in the olden days it used to be the Golden Gun and that was it. Now we have Golden Gun, Stasis and Mobius Quiver updated, all of which provide some level of effectiveness to the user or if in a team. Mobius Quiver has always been a good super to use but was easily outpaced by other supers via Warlocks or Titans. And although that is still the case, at least they can now be a bit more usable as they could be a supplier of applying more damage or debuff. With Orpheus Rig added to the setup, instead of us firing 2 shots, we will fire 3 shots instead, which as you've probably seen, allows our third damage to do some monstrous damage. Using this in Raid for example against the Caretaker, allowing me to take out a good chunk of the boss's health within 3 super hits, and then applying the debuff on top of it just made killing the boss a whole lot easier for me and my team. Another example of this is using the building PSI Ops missions against the Lugan Hive. For my super alone, we were able to take out one third of the boss's health and move to the next stage. One third. That's a lot of damage in a short time frame, but just good to show that Void 3.0 was drastically needed to make the exotic have any sort of use in game again. Although buffing the exotic directly and making it inflict more damage for each tower connected could have worked as well. They probably thought this through as just as much about buffing the super would get and if they could potentially break the game by doing such process. I'm not sure, but I can't complain as the build is up there for the most useful endgame build for covering a quick run of normal, master to grandmaster content. If you're someone that enjoys these type of content and want to burn through them quickly for maximum efficiency, then I recommend you add this to your collection as this alongside a stasis hunter basically means hunters have a lot more firepower than ever before and now is the perfect time to use them. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with destiny news and content. Once again thanks for stopping by, I'll see you all in the next one.